do you normally just panic and spray wildly whenever you see an enemy? Well, if you do, I want to introduce you to other mechanics you can add to your arsenal to develop good habits and improve your gunplay even further. Hello everybody, my name is Shrey and I want to welcome you back to another video. Hope you guys are doing well as we have a video on how to improve gunplay today. I want to talk to you guys about our topic today, which is spraying, bursting, and tapping. Most of you guys, when you encounter an enemy, you guys will hold down your left mouse button and pray that you guys will get the kill. Now I'm not going to say it never works, but it's much harder down the line against better players. You will need to learn all these techniques and when to use them if you want to become one of those better players that I mentioned. Let's go over the different techniques that you can work on to take your game to the next level. But first, we have our question of the day. For our question of the day, I want to ask you guys how you feel about the new Elder Flame set. I know a lot of people have been complaining about how expensive the skin set is, but I also want to know your thoughts on how they look. For me, I wouldn't purchase the full bundle. The only thing I like in the set is the Vandal and the Flaming Knife. I love the last variant of the Elder Flame set. It looks exactly like the Elder Dragon in League of Legends. Also again, the flames on the knife is pretty sick. The finisher also looks really cool, but the whole set is just really distracting with its dragon theme. Just too much going on and I don't like that especially on the operator. Let me know what your thoughts are about the pricing and the skin line in the comments below. With that said, let's get into the video. We'll start off the first one with tapping. This is probably the most difficult technique but the most important towards improvement. Tapping is when you steadily click one at a time for very accurate shots. Ideally, you want to be aiming at the head for the most optimal result, which is dealing the most damage in the least amount of shots. In a game like Valorant, where the time to kill is very fast, you always have to be focusing on headshots as much as you can. Through practicing tapping, this will benefit you in doing so. Of course though, when factoring the opponent's movement, this technique becomes more difficult to pull off. Tapping is necessary on pistol and eco rounds as well as on gun rounds when you're using weapons like the Guardian and Vandal. This technique really helps with first shot accuracy. If you find that you're relying too much on spraying and not hitting the headshot with your first bullet, try practicing with the Sheriff or Guardian in the practice range. By using one of those guns, it will improve your accuracy by a significant amount. While using those guns, you'll see what you can further improve on and break your bad habit of simply spraying first and aiming second. I would also say for tapping properly that you have to be pretty good at tracking as well. They pretty much correlate with each other. If you have anything that can help you practice tracking on a headshot level at a horizontal plane, then do it. Whether it be aim labs, Kovacs, CSGO workshop maps, or even just practicing with a friend, tracking is very helpful for practicing one taps on moving targets which enemies will be doing a lot in your games. If it seems like you can't quite track enemies very well, I'd recommend lowering your sensitivity. If you're not sure what to lower it to, try googling some of the Valorant Pro's eDPI to get a guideline. eDPI, again, is effective DPI and it's the sensitivity multiplied by your mouse DPI. Lowering sensitivity is a very good way of getting more consistent if you're above like 600 eDPI. Most pros hover around 150 to 600 eDPI. This is just purely a suggestion though. Back to the topic at hand, when is it a good time to tap? Well, you normally tap either on pistol rounds or at very long ranges on gun round. Pistol rounds, you really have to rely on tapping on the opponent's head instead of spamming shots. If you try to spam shots wildly with a pistol, you'll be insanely inaccurate, maybe only hitting body shots and getting your own head taken off. You'll want smooth, controlled, single clicks to the head while weaving in and out of cover on pistol rounds. If you want a good idea of how this looks like, go watch some pro Valorant tournaments. Their movement and aim combined is so clean and crispy, and that, my friends, is what you guys want to strive for. As for gun rounds, you normally tap when the enemy is really far away like at 30 plus meters or when it's angle where you can only see their head. An example I'd like to give would be Haven C Long or Ascent Mid. These are very long angles in which spraying might not be as effective and tapping will give you more control on landing headshots. Even though you might not be using this technique much in game, definitely practice tapping in the range. Hitting headshots is very important and practicing tapping will develop good crosshair placement with proper fire timing as in you won't be firing too early which is a very prevalent mistake you see in lower elo. Guns that benefit from tapping are the Classic, Ghost, Sheriff, Vandal, Guardian, and even Marshall. I'd highly recommend Vandal if you do enjoy tapping heads. For bursting, bursting is more reliable and consistent than tapping so you should be using this technique a lot more in your games. Bursting is when you fire a burst of 3-5 to five bullets and you reset the recoil to shoot again. Bursting is very highly effective with automatic weapons with gnarly recoil and really helps people learn how to control themselves which builds a very good habit. If you practice burst firing, you'll really know how to not panic and reset your recoil to get more accurate shots leading to more and more kills. This is a huge improvement in the long term. 
Again, with bursting, you want to obviously hit the headshot, but even if you don't get a headshot, you'll still get another chance as the opponent should be tagged and their movement speed is heavily reduced for another round of your burst fire. Burst fire is best used for medium and long range encounters within 20 to 50 meters paired with good counter strafing left to right and vice versa. For actually both tapping and bursting, I'd highly recommend you to practice both of these techniques in the training range while counter strafing. While aim is very important, movement is just as important as staying mobile makes you a trickier target to hit. You don't want to be a sitting duck and easy prey for your opponents. You want to be fast like a rabbit, juking enemies, and then biting like a lion. Wait, I should have just used the Muhammad Ali quote. Never mind. My point is to stay mobile and these techniques will really help you do so instead of spraying and being stuck in the same spot. Also, another bad habit I want to mention to you guys is to not crouch every time you take a gunfight. This is a very bad habit even I do a lot of the times and it's bad bad. Crouching makes you very stationary and makes it so enemies can land headshots on you easier because your model is more bunched up. Also if the enemy has bad cross replacement and aims like chest or waist level, they might get a random headshot when you're crouched. To add on to that, even if you do get a kill, you won't be able to move back into cover as maybe another enemy peeks and kills you because you're crouched and too committed to the spray down. I do want to say though, sometimes crouching is good. When it's a 1v1, crouching is fine as you only need to get one kill on one target. So being stationary isn't as bad as long as you kill the other guy first. It's also good for messing up players with good cross replacement as you might duck their initial shot. Other than those reasons, try not to make crouching into a habit. Back to bursting though, the best guns for bursting are going to be the Frenzy, Stinger, Spectre, Vandal, and Phantom. If you use these guns, instead of holding down the left mouse button, try to mix your movement in with accurate burst fire to get kills and then go back to cover. Next up, the noob's utmost favorite technique, the spray and pray. Just kidding guys, spraying is very viable when done right. Spraying is when you're holding down the fire button and adjusting your aim for the spray pattern plus recoil. Lower elo players will pretty much spray any chance they get when they get into a firefight because they panic or think as long as they're clicking the fire button, they'll get a kill. But that just simply isn't right. Spraying does require good recoil control and mastery over the spray pattern. The ideal range for spraying would be point blank to around 20 meters. But if you have really good spray control, then any distance is fine. The thing with spraying is that if you have really good first shot accuracy and can land headshots, you won't really need to spray. In a perfect world, you would just one-tap everybody like in a screen montage, but we are human so we make mistakes and we're bad at Valorant. But it's okay because spraying makes up for our badness and lack of aim. Seriously though guys, there are many reasons why you'd want to spray. It's a good technique for shooting through smoke, spraying down multiple enemies in a choke, and spray transferring. In Valorant, there are many smokes deployed in a regular match, so you're often spraying through smokes to try and get some kills. When you're spraying through the smoke, try to imagine where enemies might be positioned in the smoke like common angles. Also, if you hear any footsteps or indicators on where they might be, feel free to spray away. Remember to try and keep your spray nice and compact, so if you do hit a target, you finish them off. If you find yourself spraying through the smoke often and dying, it's probably because enemies see your gun's tracer. With something like a vandal, enemies will most likely shoot back to the origin of your bullets. If you want to conceal your location, the Phantom is better for that as it has no tracers and also has a faster fire rate with more bullets in the magazine, making it ideal for spraying. While we're talking about the Phantom, it's also great for spraying down enemies in the choke with the 5 extra bullets compared to the Vandal. But if you really want a 5 man spray down, hey, why not get the Odin with 50 bullet magazine? More bullets equal more kills, right? The Odin completely melts enemy teams like butter when they're clumped together and lined up. Just a disclaimer, don't buy Odin every round. It's pretty troll for your economy when you die with it. It's pretty good for spamming walls at the beginning of the round though as a luxury weapon. But yeah, if people are lined up, spraying is great as it'll net you a lot of collateral damage and you might get multiple kills behind the target you're initially shooting at. The last point I want to make is spray transferring. This is referring to when you're shooting a target initially and you're transferring the spray to another target that appears. If you want to see a good example of this, there's a famous clip of Hiko doing this in a 1v4 vs Sentinels in a tournament. Spray transfers are very useful if you're proficient in the spray pattern and can change targets while maintaining the pattern accurately. This allows you to get multiple kills at different positions in the duration of one spray. Now this is very difficult but also very rewarding when achieved. Definitely give this a try in the practice range, transferring from target to target during one spray. You'll also want to aim for headshot with your spray transfer for the most optimal result, but maybe start off with body shots first. Try practicing this a bit daily and your muscle memory will take over and you'll be seeing montage worthy plays soon. Guns highly effective for spraying are Spectre, Ares, Phantom, and Odin. 
I do want to mention that Phantom is probably your go-to rifle if you prefer holding down that left mouse button. And that'll be it for our video today. Hopefully you guys learned a bit more about these gunplay techniques and practice them. Through practicing each individual technique, you'll build better habits and become a more well-rounded player. We wish the best towards your improvement and thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video. And as always, please like and subscribe to support our channel. Also remember to answer our question of the day in the comments if you haven't already. Again, as always, my name is Trey, you'll be on your way, and I hope you have a nice day. Peace.